Today, let's just start with what your key takeaways were or are from uh, today's uh, the Monetary Policy Committee decision of the B Bank of Ghana. Okay, so um, it wasn't, we didn't see too much of a surprise from the Monetary Policy Committee today. Um, largely, we were expecting a, a, a rate freeze um, at 16%, and indeed, that's what came through. Um, our, our expectations was largely because we expected um, the inflation hasn't inched up so significantly. Um, it's moved up from about 92 to about 9.5%. The city has been relatively stable. Um, and generally, we think that the macroeconomic backdrop is fairly stable and doesn't warrant any, any uh, rate reduction or rate increase. So generally, the risk to the outlook has been, has been fairly stable. And therefore, the decision by the Monetary Policy Committee was in line with what we expected now what do you make of i mean comments from the B the bank of ghana governor saying that uh, the boj stands ready to respond appropriately to any uh issues that may develop within the market um I, we think that they are, they are in a good position to be able to respond adequately if you look at the reserve position of the central bank um, which is in four months of import cover we think that any surprises that could come in 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 the way of the exchange rate they have their ammunition to 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 um, support the city in that regard um, if it comes to inflation as well we think that the biggest risk to inflation um, in ghana has been uh, managing the exchange rate and also um how crude oil importation has been. And now that we are net exporters, um, crude oil price increase has been, um, has, has any increase uh, works out well for us. So I think that by and large, the central bank is in a position to adequately respond to any surprises in the, in the near term. Now let's move over to data put out today by also by the Bank of Ghana talking about the country's total debt stock and of course uh, the financial services uh, sector. Now for the total debt stock, uh, according to what the uh, BOJ put out, it says total debt, debt stock uh, is higher now by 21.4 billion cities. I was in Q1 first quarter of this year, bringing the total debt stock of the country to 198 billion cities. And so that also brings the, the total debt to GDP of the country to 57 0.5%. I mean, what are your thoughts on that in terms of how this is climbing and how the BOJ, I mean, the fiscal authorities, how prepared are they to uh, accommodate this rise in debt uh, stock? Um, well, the rising debt is, is never a good issue for, for anybody that studies the macros. But um, I believe that more recently the, the GDP was rebased. So I think before we were somewhere about 61% of, about 62% of GDP, and now we've reduced to the 57s. So on a statistical um, basis, um, we, are, we are much, we are in a better position. But um, regardless, we, the, the increase is something that that we've seen happen cyclically. Um, usually in the first half of the year, the, the, the central bank or um, the Ministry of Finance likes to front load its debt obligations in usually in the first uh, half of the year. So you see a lot of um, euro bond issuances and debt issuances in the first half of the year. So whilst we the 21% increase is, is, is quite um, a, a, a jump, um, it's not too surprising, given that it's something that happens uh, cyclically. And we think that in the second quarter or in the second half of the year, we are not likely to see that same rate of, rate of increase. Okay, now, finally, let's quickly talk about the financial services sector, and in particular, non-performing loans. According to the data put out by the BOJ, uh, NPLs increased marginally to 18.9%. That's from 18.4% uh, in January this year. Is this uh, something that you think the BOJ is worried about, or are these just uh, comfortable levels? Um, I don't know what, how worried the BOG is, but for us as analysts and portfolio managers in the industry who look at banks or invest in banks, it's something that's a bit worrying for us. Um, what we've noticed is that uh, most of the discussions we had with the managers of the banks that we invest in had, had been in indicating that at the start of the year when IFRS 9 came into, into effect, we could see higher provisioning, and as a result, some of them had to make certain um, MP uh, allocations so that seemed to make a bit of sense um, but when you peruse the numbers even further and you look at data from other 
other banks, even those that were reporting in line with IFRS 9 earlier, you could still see very sharp increases in NPLs. So um, we are a bit worried in uh, at the, at the, at the rate at which NPLs are crystallizing on the balance sheet of banks, um, but we are yet to really get a clear sense of why this is happening. Um, either there are legacy issues that are finally being um, crystallized on the balance sheet, but we certainly don't think is the impact of any accounting changes. Um, we are worried about the NPLs that are rising. All right, Derek, thank you so much for your time today.